<laughs> Robin. In studio, Al Frank and everyone. Sorry to make you wait. We uh, had no, some, no. We had some broads in we here. We had some dames in here. They call their sh- uh, their show broad-minded, so we had a couple of the broads. A little play on words because they're women. I got it. Broad-minded. <laughs> yeah. So, Mr. Franken, how are you? I'm great. Very good. You're uh, quite the uh, best-selling author these days. I, I'm quite the best-selling author. Yes, people buying your books up like crazy. Uh, I think nice. half the people that buy them love your point of view and half hate it. I uh, think it's more two-thirds <laughs> of third, but it'd be nice if uh, half the people... Uh, you think? Well, it'd be actually, I get some people uh, buying it the, the, uh, who, who haven't decided yet, and that's nice, or, or who... Uh, actually are curious. Actually want to uh, find out something. I like reading things that get me l- l- angry. Well, that, a lot of the, times you read and just go, mother, f- this, no. Because well, that, really there's a lot of that in this book. Is well, there? Yeah. A lot well, of people are starting to say that you're biased to the left. <laughs> <laughs> just a little. Who left. are these people? <laughs> little left. And where leaning. are they? I want to talk yes, to them. Yeah. A little left leaning. <laughs> I love, well, it depends where you where you are. But I mean, people. I've read I've read uh, uh, some of O'Reilly's uh, books. Yeah, that'll make you mad. And and then Michael Moore's books. Right. And I'm equally as pissed reading either one uh-huh. because uh, it's so far one side or the other that it cannot possibly be based in fact or truth. <laughs> it well, is just ridiculous. You know, my, uh, mine are are uh, uh, maybe. Different than anyone else's in that uh, I, I have a particular thing about lies and the truth. So I do a tremendous amount of research, and also people on my shows or researching my book do it. So and at least there's some humor thrown in. Yeah. Uh, so that would be that would those two things would distinguish it certainly from O'Reilly. Yeah. Yeah. Where there is just a complete lack of humor. Yeah, at least his private, laugh a his bit. private life is hysterical as all uh, hell. That uh, yeah, you <laughs> know, problem he had he, with the phone. He phone did a, calls. He, yeah, he did a good job making that go away. <laughs> his feelings well, are just as strong. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, he paid her off. So yeah, <laughs> but didn't do anything. Uh, didn't do anything. I'm just. No, he actually it. never denied it. Yeah. He never denied it. But he never came forward and said that he did it. No, but uh, all he had to do was make a settlement. And, Pay a lot of money. And, make and sure part of the settlement is that you never talk about it. Can't talk about it. That sure sounds like you did it. <laughs> yes. Yes, I would say. And she had she had what seemed like a transcript Yeah. of a thing, which, um, you know. Leads me to believe there is a tape somewhere which yes which leads me to believe that's why he settled which and but anyway that that's you know what's interesting about him is that he talks a lot on his show about morals morals and he talks about traditional values yeah, and exactly. his traditional values as opposed to uh we were part of that secular <laughs> leftist yeah, yeah. uh hum, you know and 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 he keeps talking about his traditional values and I don't know what phone what is traditional about phone sex I didn't think the phone had been around long enough <laughs> To be a, tra- you know, maybe telegraph sex <laughs> is a traditional value, but this is a guy, you know, a married man, uh, calling a female employee who doesn't want to be called, mm-hmm. and making very, very filthy calls to her. Yeah, that's not a traditional value where I, you know, it's it, a lot it, harder. It, my tradition. It's a lot harder for the right to preach their agenda because. They can come off looking hip- hypocritical very easily by the life they lead, their personal life and stuff. It seems to me if you're more left leaning, no matter what you do, you go, "Hey, it's part of lifestyle, man." Well, no, I mean, we I, can I, fuck I, and I, suck I, and this, and it doesn't matter. Is this uh, on on uh, XM? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I, I just figured that out. Yeah. Uh, no. Here, here's the. Th- I think it's it's you can be hypocritical wherever you are. If you you can be hypocritical if you um, you know uh, if you preach uh, be, being an environmentalist and and uh, you know litter. invest in, in litter. <laughs> <laughs> if you throw a can out the window, I mean more of <laughs> more of a moral lifestyle thing. I think it's yeah, easier but I mean there's the, there's plenty of room for right, hypocrisy all up. over the place. Yeah, yeah hypocrisy, yeah. sure. Even yeah. you know, uh, liberals of course can come off looking very hypocritical. Yeah. So uh, so I wouldn't I wouldn't say that that uh, 
they they have a, a lock on hypocrisy mm-hmm. that, the, that the right does. But there is, I mean, obviously, look, there's there's Limbaugh, who for years would when any uh, drug addict would die would say, just another dead doper. Good riddance to you, sir. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, anyone who uses drugs illegally should be put away, should be thrown in prison. And now, you know, so and 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 uh, uh, Bill Bennett likes to say, like, uh, I never, uh, you know, wrote a, against gambling. Uh, hmm. Therefore, I'm not a hypocrite. And I said, "Well, no, of course you didn't, because you knew you were a gambler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why, and, and, why are you going to put yourself but, in that yeah, trap? <laughs> but, but uh, you know, you were uh, you gambled away eight million dollars. There's something wrong with that. It's a bit of a problem. Yeah, it's, I it's, would it's say a problem. Sure. And and by the way, your uh, Empower America, whatever your group said that that did label uh, gambling as a as one of the things that hurt society and and so you're a hypocrite sir mm-hmm. yeah you know but anyway so what uh, none of us are perfect right guys huh right the, right can oh, well. we all agree yeah. there <laughs> is that a bipartisan agreement there we, we are there, there we are not let's perfect. not point you know when you're pointing a finger at someone else there's three fingers pointing yep. back at you pointing back <laughs> that's at right you. absolutely that's what yeah. i always say right. who do you want to see as president next Time Are you for or against Bush? Uh, <laughs> I, um, How happy I, are you that he's not looking good at all these days? You know, I have to say that I don't take joy in our president doing badly, but it's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it, he's just, uh, so many things are coming home to roost, and it is sad. It is sad that it has to happen because of uh, people suffering in Katrina. I mean, that, that sort of opened everyone's eyes to how much cronyism there is and how, you know, after four years after 9-11, how we didn't get anything together. Um, and, 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 what's, and, and Iraq. Now, there's a thing in the New York Times today saying he's going to... The New York Times, what's that? Uh, it's 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 actual paper that you have on your on on here. We read the New York Post. See the difference in our <laughs> oh, see the difference in, between you and us. We don't read any articles without a picture. Right. Not enough <laughs> pictures in that one. Uh, no picture on this one. It's but just, he, it's just too big to it read. It said he's scheduled to give a speech in Annapolis, Maryland, on Wednesday, assessing progress both in Iraq and what he calls the progress. broader war on terrorism. And several official said he's expected to contend that the. Uh, Iraqi forces have made great progress. Mm-hmm. Now, this is on the heels of a piece in the Atlantic Monthly by James Fallows, who we're having on our show today, which says that there's been no progress, or essentially no progress. And you just can't trust this guy. And mm-hmm. I think that's what people are, are getting, is that so if he goes out and says we've made a lot of progress uh, in, in building this Iraqi army and we're going to be able to leave just in time, for the 06 election, you know, midterms, yeah. I don't trust them, you know? And we're not going to cut and run. We're going to turn and tiptoe out. Yeah, pull the old Vietnam. Yeah, and, and it really worries me. It, it, uh, I'm going over there, actually, next month. I'm going, I do USO tours. Speaking of which, my wife tell, asked me, she, she doesn't like me going. She says, you don't see O'Reilly going over to Iraq doing yeah, USO true. tours. And I say, honey, that's not fair. He has no talent. <laughs> that's what I say to her. That would dishearten the troops. <laughs> to bring morale down. Yeah. The, if they the, were too happy and chipper over there, he's just, then you send O'Reilly. He's just a pompous ass. Do you do the radio show there, or do you just stand up, or both? Uh, I just do stand up. I, I, I do actually phone in from... Uh, uh, but but you don't know what your schedule's going to be. You can't do a scheduled radio show. Well, Jimmy did. Uh, he went over there. Yeah, when I performed a few Colin, times, and uh, we, no, we, did, uh, we did like a week there. In yeah, the end of yeah. two thousand three. Where'd you go? Uh, we were in uh, Baghdad, uh, Kirkuk, Talil, Balad. We couldn't land because the fog was too thick. So we uh-huh. spent two days in Baghdad, just a week. Balad's ago. Anaconda, the, that base. I don't know. We we, we went uh, down. It was like a hundred feet. They couldn't see the really? way. We went back up. Had to fly. You know, we hit the history with Ricardo Sanchez. You know. Oh well, that's then you're safe. Yeah. Bunch of double force with people, real men and me. <laughs> real <laughs> men and you. Who are the other comics with you? Uh, Colin and uh, Lori Kilmartin, who is uh-huh. a writer. Great. Oh, you Great. Know, isn't, it, isn't it amazing doing it? Yeah. I mean, the, the gigs are fantastic. The soldiers are happy. 
that you're there. You they're know? really happy you're there. They're really grateful that you show up. Yeah, and you feel safe. I mean, you're surrounded you by do. the U.S. military. Right. You feel. Uh, we didn't go though. We flew only uh, uh, C-130s. We didn't have any Black Hawks. I, I did Black Hawks, which made me nervous. Yeah, it's scary. Mm. Yeah, I did. Um, it's funny. I after the first time I went in 2003, and then I also went last year. And, uh, but after I came back. Uh, I went around Christmas time, and uh, in the spring, I was out in L.A. the Friday before uh, Oscars, mm -hmm. and uh, Ariana Huffington invited me to this big Hollywood party, and at this agent's house, and there's all these A-list people there, uh, uh, Mel Gibson and Tom Hanks, and uh, actually some people I knew from doing Saturday Night Live that had been hosts. But at one point, I got, like, literally overwhelmed by all this. And I, I went to sit in a room by myself. It was a library at this a, uh, agent's house. And I sat down, and I heard, yeah. and it was Sylvester Stallone. And I never met him before, so I said, hey, Sylvester. <laughs> and he said, hey, I heard you went on one of them USO tours. And I said, yeah, I, I did. He said, yeah, I was supposed to, but I didn't. And I said, well, why didn't you? And I said, I thought it might be dangerous. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and I said to him, well, it's not really, because you're with the USO, and they don't want anyone in the USO to get hurt, and you're traveling, you're really embedded. And, well, let me ask you this. Was there any time at any point that you felt that like you might be in danger? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I guess the only times were when uh, we took Blackhawks from, from Baghdad to, to Crit, and there had been some some Blackhawk shot down, so I guess then I felt like maybe I had a 1 in 10,000 chance of something, you know. He goes, yeah, that's why I didn't go. <laughs> and I said, weren't you, like, fucking Rambo? <laughs> yeah, in the movies. And he went, well, yeah, but I got a good life, you know. I don't uh, you know, I like my life. <laughs> and that was, but but essentially, yeah, you're very safe. And, and my wife goes nuts for the three days that I'm in... Iraq, because we also go to, uh, we're also in Kuwait and in Afghanistan, and I can't, and we're taking great care of, and I can imagine what the family members of guys that are over there for a year, year and a half, yeah, do yeah, like. sure. not just a few so days. They, 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 they must, and and my wife was saying that too the other day, just just yesterday, because you know, I, she said, God, I I can't imagine what it'd be like to be a family member of somebody mm -hmm. over there. I think it's worse for the family members and for the for the mm -hmm. the troops in some ways. I actually felt safer in Iraq than I did in Kuwait. We were in Kuwait for one night or a night and a half because Iraq is a war zone. Everybody knows what's going on. But right. in Kuwait, you're in a hotel which is deemed safe. But it's like you're in a, like a Middle Eastern city. I just didn't feel comfortable in oh, Kuwait. Oh, you're in a hotel all. there, huh? Yeah, yeah. They See, they put the us show. on a base. There. Oh, we didn't stay there. No, we stayed in a hotel. We're all bases. We're like. Was there a Starbucks there, Jimmy? <laughs> there actually was. Absolutely, there was in the hotel. There really that was. didn't make you feel safe. That made me feel. Yeah. <laughs> There's no a Starbucks in right. right. I may be beheaded, but at least a latte will go down first. Yeah, yeah it was uh, kind of horrifying. So, who do you want to see as uh, our next president? Oh, okay. Did you answer that? I didn't. Oprah uh, Winfrey. Uh, no. Some uh, say it should be. The what do you next think? Uh, what do you think of Joe Biden? I like Joe Biden. I'd I'd uh, I'd be more of a Hillary person. I'd be uh, also. See, you 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 throwing you you throwing away your vote. You are throwing it no, away. No no no, no no no. It's a gimmick uh, ticket. What? Hillary. She's not a ticket. She's a person. It first be, of all. No no. It would be a gimmick <laughs> ticket. Why is that a gimmick ticket? She's an incredibly able person. Uh, and and. Uh, is America ready to to uh, elect, elect a, a woman? Yeah, that's the elect question. a woman who they think is. No, is kind that's of, the question. I everyone... think there's a lot of uh, forget about women. I think there's a lot of people that don't think like she's Hillary. very credible as as uh, uh, an elected official. Never mind president. Well, why though? Why? Uh, you know. Why? So there think, you go. I, I think she needs <laughs> to become this picture of feminism. And to be honest with you, about about her is she did what any other woman did what she did, which is stay with a guy who was sleeping with everybody under her nose and embarrassing her, and she stayed with him. And there's something about that that really bothers me. It's like if any other woman did it, they would be attacking her as this 1950s housewife. Weak, yeah. Yeah, but because she does it, they're like, wow, look at her. She's I, I don't. I don't know. I, first of all, I think you might read that differently. I think that actually helped her in a way, is that she stood by her man in an mm. odd way. And, and uh, that's not the sum of what she is. I think that's a... In fact, she may have the strong... You know, if she runs... And uh, in, in 2008, and people say, "Well, I have a I have a real problem with Bill Clinton's personal life." She has the argument of like, "You think you have a problem with it?" 
How about me? And I go, oh, yeah, 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 okay. And I think she's incredibly brilliant. Now, I mean, there are other people that I really like, too. I like Barack Obama. It's probably too soon for him to run, but I just think he's uh, going to be president someday. See, here is why the Democrats screw up year after year uh, with uh, with the election, four year after four year. You, you guys got to get a legitimate candidate in there. Not some – Obama – Ain't gonna happen. I just said H- that. Hillary, yeah, yeah, I know, but even to bring it up, and, and uh, Hillary, just knock it off. Find a credible. No, Hillary beats any Republican except McCain. I don't think so. No way. I don't think so. I think for a woman, name a Republican who beats her. McCain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no, na- name a different Republican. I mean, name a Republican besides McCain who beats her. Um, Strom Thurmond. Name a Republican who's alive that beats Friggin her. Friggin' right. Cheney would beat her. Oh, my Lord, no. I, that's, how ba- that's how bad it is. It's, I think you don't... I don't think you know. I don't think you... No. I think you read... You, you read your New York Post. The pro- no, the I'll problem, read my New York the, Times. The no. problem with a woman being elected, she'll have to be a conservative, I think, because you're going to get... I think to get you crossover, you're going to have more liberal people and thinking the, the power of a woman being president is going to be important and crossing over than you will have conservatives going to vote for. You understand what I mean? I think for a, a minority or a woman to win, they're going to have to be Republican eventually. I, I understand that, and, and you put it so well, too. Yes. Um, I understand that sentiment, but um, I think she's a, uh, I think she, she is very, very well regarded, you know, certainly in the Democratic Party and stands a good chance of getting the nomination and if she does i don't see a republican you've just named giuliani giuliani's not going to get the nomination well you're saying republican i think he could beat her I th- I but think he's not going to get the nomination her. well how do we know well, you're right how do we know but he he lived with two gay guys so what he's a good egg That's i know good. but crossover but, helps out with the uh no no, no 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 but what i'm saying is is that he's not going to get the nomination yeah you know they're yeah. not going to they're not going to go with the guy who I still think Giuliani could beat her, though. I think credibility-wise, Giuliani is seen as this rock, this ex-prosecutor, and the way he handled New York after 9-11 and what he did for New York. And I think that his in- inaction in public service, not that she's not sincere, which I don't think she is, but people would argue that, but I do think that You don't that think he, she's sincere? Nah, I, I personally never, never, never dug her. I just don't. I haven't seen her do anything. <laughs> don't I, her. I don't, man. I don't, I have, she's done That's nothing. That's how people vote, though. She, but she's never All said anything. Go, ah, I don't dig Welcome her. here to... You know what I like who's a issues Democrat? Issues in focus. <laughs> I think, I Jimmy think Carter's a sincere Jim guy. Jim never dug right. her. It's nothing against her, but I think her her, her career motivation is... Oh, you mean lot. she's ambitious? Well, ambitious, <laughs> but it's more it's 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 more for herself than it is public service, I think. That's just how she comes off. It's, it sounds corny, it, but that putting that Yankee hat on, it's almost like you're not a Yankee. There's something about Giuliani being a New Yorker and a Yankee fan. People feel like, or at least this is the person who we're well, seeing. Well, here, here's, if you talk to, like, firefighters in New York, and by the way, I thought he did, it was masterful after 9-11, but, um, and, and, and I went to a number of, uh, of services, funerals for firefighters, because, because, uh, Giuliani asked people to, because you know when a firefighter dies, normally all these firefighters from all over show up, but we had several hundred die, and so they had one funeral after another, so Giuliani asked the public to show up, so my wife and I would go, just went, just as just to go, and I, and I saw him at a number of them, and he was great, but if you talk to firefighters now, they don't like him too much, and one of the reasons they don't like him is, and, and uh is that he did nothing to get uh, interoperability between radio signals between the police and the fire department done between the first attack on the World Trade Center and the second attack. And that cost a lot of lives. And I don't th- I think if you really examine his record before 9-11, it ain't so strong. I, I, again, I think he did a masterful job afterwards. I, you don't think he cleaned up New York before 9-11? As far as the way the shape it was in, like with with uh, you know just with crime and, and the little quality of life stuff that people called them a Nazi for, uh, I think those some of those were good. I also think some of them were started during Dinkins. I think that uh, community policing was started during Dinkins. It was started and I, during Dinkins. It gave uh, Giuliani a lot of stuff to clean up, <laughs> and make New York look better. Well, uh, Dinkins was oof. Cops didn't like I remember either. driving into the city. Uh, when Dinkins was mayor, and uh, nothing but uh, uh, squeegee guys, 
uh, porno shops, which, you know, fine, I frequented uh, quite a few, but... You know, they wouldn't uh, exist as, without people like you. As, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as uh, you know, uh, bringing money into the city and and well, building, you know, you have I to think, also remember that that uh, I mean, Bloomberg has improved over that. If you yeah, and and but also that uh, you know, Giuliani was mayor during the Clinton administration, and things really uh, during the Clinton administration went very very well for the United for. America and for New York because of the the markets and, and stuff. So a lot of that was really about uh, economic forces that had nothing to do with Giuliani. Mm -hmm. Well, look at all the Koch years before that. When you look at Koch and Ding, it's just kind of like the mess that it turned into. Well, we had we had Democrats running it. Well, no, we had we had uh, the crack epidemic, and uh, you know. And, and again, community policing did start during Dinkins, which he doesn't get any credit for at all. But that was toward the end of his um, his term. I, I think know. Giuliani was was a really great mayor, and a lot of people bring up something like uh, the Brooklyn Art Museum, which he was wrong to to try to censor the art, and they'll right. say, "Well, that's who he was." But I think he did a lot of great things for the city. He's a Republican. I think that on credibility would. Be well, well, I just don't think he's going to get the nomination because of of who the Republican who votes in Republican primaries, and that's why I think I think. I think that McCain won't, but I'm beginning to think that it, the more desperate they get, they may turn to him. Yeah, they kind of need somebody. They, they, they might need somebody. But, but looking from... at the field, I don't see someone from the normal ranks of who they would nominate that would beat Hillary. I, I don't see George Allen or Bill Frist or one of those guys. Well, they, they can't pick anybody that's really been kind of buddied with uh, uh the president no and, and involved in any of this uh, shenanigans with the war, if I may call them shenanigans. Yeah, um, shenanigans has a kind of light feel. Yeah, well. light-hearted <laughs> type of... Oh, the shenanigans. Ah, oh, yes. Ah, oh, the shenanigans going on in, in Baghdad. Were you, bu oh, that, were you buying... Were you buying... Were you buying any of the um, uh, intelligence when it first broke? Yeah. You were buying that too. <laughs> I didn't think that the uh, presidents lied to you. I yeah, I, I, I was. Are, I was you're buying being serious all that. Yeah, because Anthony was. The I was way. buying that. Like I, I can't stand Bush now, and I was a big supporter. Um, first election. I believe Colin Powell. Uh, yeah, and Colin Powell had such credibility with the people. Most credible man in the world. Yeah, I thought. I thought. And yeah. he came out when he came out in front of the UN and showed those pictures and gave the speech. It was like, wow, okay, you know. We got to do something, and then afterwards, it's like they, they found nothing. They found, and they kept finding nothing, and then the whole re thats when I just changed over. When uh, the entire reason for the war changed, fuck the weapons. It's not mm -hmm. about that anymore. It's Freedom. about these people need to be free. Well, that isn't kind of what you told us in the first place. Because if it was about freeing these people. I wouldn't have really been going rah rah and backing this because no. it seems to me they really don't crave this freedom. They uh, don't understand it, and uh, Saddam seemed to rule with that iron fist that kept terrorists out of his country, and now it's a clusterfuck, as they call it. Uh, any ideas? Because it, a lot of people say uh, we got to stop the war somehow, right. but even the Democrats are saying we can't cut and run. Right? Do you have any? No one has real solution to the problem. Do you have any ideas of how you get the guys out but keep it from just anarchy after we're gone? Well, we're close to anarchy now. I mean, yeah. we're we're closer to anarchy. I mean, there's another uh, it was a story yesterday in, in, in this thing called the New York Times yeah. about uh, Mokhtar al-Sadr, who is this radical uh, Shiite cleric. Didn't he start the whole thing? Wasn't he the one who was the, the original problem? Uh, he was one of the original problems. He was the... <laughs> <laughs> he was one of the. He was the original problem in the South, in in, in in the Shia side. He wasn't the Sunni side, which is uh, uh, that was Fallujah. Uh, that was that was also the start of the problems. And uh, but Sadr, yeah, his uh, his army, uh, his militia killed a lot of Americans. And now he's going to be on the ballot. He's going to be have yeah. 30 guys on the ballot, he's, as many as the Dawa party, as, ma as many as the Skeeter party. Uh, he's going to have as many guys on the ballot as possible. And they just killed like about 30, uh, 
uh, like 30 Sunnis the other day, just in like a massacre. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is friggin' crazy over there. Now, uh, I'm having James Fallows on today, who's written a piece for the Atlantic on, on, uh, getting the Iraqi military up. Cause that, that's the whole thing is like, we'll, we'll, when they can take over, we'll leave. Then that's yeah. what we keep saying. But we're not serious about that. We have not been serious about training this army. And part of it was is that we failed to recognize for a long time, refused to, that we were facing an insurgency and in what we were facing. And so we wasted the first year, and uh, we don't really put enough resources and, and guys into training. Yeah. And we don't have enough guys over there. We don't have enough guys to both train them and to uh, keep things at bay. Essentially, some gentleman on uh, uh, Meet the Press yesterday. See, there you go. You, you watch Meet the Press. Uh, he says uh, training the Iraqi army seems to be the selling point of the administration right now. We got to get them trained. Once they're up to speed, we can leave. Then he brought up a great point that no matter how well trained they are, they have to believe in what they're fighting for once we leave, and he doesn't really see that happening. It's it's you 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 can give them the guns, you can teach them how to use it, but unless they really believe in this cause for freedom and are united, once we leave, they're just better armed insurgents and and you know uh, 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 fractured uh, pieces of of governments and back to their tribes and right exactly. uh, and then now you're you're screwed again, even though that you trained this army, they just don't believe in what they're fighting for, and I seriously don't think they. They do. I don't think they understand what freedom is enough to really have that passion I think, to I fight think, for it. I think and, uh, many of them do. And I think when we first got in there, there were a lot of people who were just elated. The Kurds. That, well, mm -hmm. the Kurds certainly do. For the people, yeah, everyone that was being shit on loved it. Well, th that's true. I mean, the Shias, but, but a lot of that includes people who, it was like a majority of uh, Iraqis. And... We blew it. We blew it by allowing looting and by not uh, getting the electricity up and not. We just blew it. But, we but blew let me it. ask you, the electricity and stuff weren't they constantly sabotaging? Not that you don't, you don't have yes. to overcome that, but it's not like we weren't trying to do it. It's like their own people are sabotaging. No, but 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 we there's all kinds of pre-war planning that was done that was ignored, that said that they were going to do that, that said you, the, the first thing you have to do is not allow chaos, and we allowed looting right away. And that they did twelve billion dollars worth of infrastructure damage during the looting, is estimated, and that's when we lost control of the country, and that's when it be that's when the insurgent the, you know the first bomb that killed more than one person from an insurgent didn't happen until four months after the invasion. Did you think maybe that's when mm. Saddam got caught? It seemed like a lot of them. Like what I want to know is once they realized Saddam Hussein was not coming back. That's to me when the country completely fell apart. It's like not that it wasn't happening before that, but that's when they all went, okay, now we can do what we want to do. Where was Al Sadr? I think his father was murdered by Saddam. He's a cleric. Right, believer. right, exactly. Where was all the anger and the militia when when Saddam was, was killing his father? Where where was that the balls then? Where, where was this? Uh, anger? Well, he had because he had clamped down that country with five hundred thousand troops. We we have one hundred and fifty thousand. Hmm. So, so in other words, he knew the way they should be handled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this is what them. this is what our army was saying. Shinseki, who the army chief of staff said we need to send four hundred thousand guys in there, and Rumsfeld, no, I want to transform the military, and I can do this with a hundred thousand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Tommy Franks finally got him up to like a hundred and fifty or something. They went in there. And he thought, and they called it mission accomplished, and they thought they had done it, and yeah. they really did. And uh, I, I would really recommend this Fallows article in the Atlantic Monthly. Uh, uh, maybe your listeners aren't aren't uh, smart. I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> I was not going to say that. We got some smarties out there. Yeah, yeah. No, and maybe they're not the, they're the, they're not the type to read that ar kind of article, even though they're brilliant. <laughs> they they uh, prefer to apply that brilliance go, to, to to keep gossip together here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's nothing. Yeah, but but uh, it, it's a very you know. There's other thing. I mean, I, I've been just really engrossed in in uh, the progress of the war and 
you know, I mean, as I say, I'm going over there for my third time. You can't go over there and entertain the troops and not support the troops and not want us to succeed. You can't. Right. It's impossible. You, you know how emotional. That must have had to be emotional for you. Oh, of course. I mean, you're around guys who are being shot at, and they're, 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 just, they're happy you're there, and you know that some of them are going to be killed. Yeah, it's, yeah, of course. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, and, and so... Uh, so I and it just makes me mad that it, the the feeling I get is that Rumsfeld doesn't really care that Wolfowitz didn't care that they and that also that they're going to continue to mislead us. That's the, that's the that's the thing that really drives me crazy is that they you know you know Cheney gives a speech about anybody who says that we misled you into the war mm. is you know. Uh, doing the most reprehensible thing. Well, come on. Come on. Yeah. You did. You Absolutely. did. And you know it. And so stop it. And and uh, uh, be accountable for, for your errors. Anyway, I know right. i got to go to something else. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the yeah. new book's called The Truth, right? Yeah, The Truth with Jokes. With jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes that makes it fun to read, the jokes part. And another Republican that could beat Hillary, Scooter Libby. Scooter. Gonna, oh, because of his name. That's an adorable <laughs> name. <laughs> cute name. Al Frank, thank you so much. We, uh, thank you, guys. We fun, like when man. you come on our show. Thank and, you. And uh, there That's, you go. Al yeah. Frank is heard on XM 167 from noon to 3 on the East Coast. There he goes. Al. Al. Yeah. Nice. Uh, <laughs> you yeah, got he, him. Uh, he just does that. You I got like him. Al Frank. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Rob Rob Rob